So, for in the representation theory, we have defined what a representation is. We have discussed what it means to say two representations are equivalent and we have also defined what is a unitary representation. These are the three quantities we defined in the previous lecture. Now, we will uh, these concepts are important for what we are going to do in this lecture. We will go back to those definitions as and when it is required. Now, I am going to talk about reducible and irreducible representations. Now, if I have a representation D of G on V, is reducible. If there exists a subspace V one of V such that if there is a subspace V 1 of V such that for all x in V 1 d of g of x is also in V 1 for all g in g. That means, you start with x in this subspace, action of this group on that will not take you out of this subgroup subspace. So, this is true for all elements g, these are there will be several such uh, such matrices and that matrix will not take the vector in V out of V, vector in V 1 out of V 1, which means we can say that V 1 is an invariant subspace. of V invariant subspace of V with respect to group G, because it is the representations of this group that are leaving this subspace an invariant subspace. So, if you have a vector space on which representation is defined and if you can find an invariant subspace, then you say that representation is reducible. If you cannot find any such invariant subspace, it is irreducible. Okay? So, if no such V 1 exists, then D is irreducible. 
Suppose it is reducible, that means there is an invariant subspace. Now you can ask a question, can you find another invariant subspace such that total vector space is direct sum of these two invariant subspaces? <coughs> Next question is, if V1 exists, can we find an invariant subspace can we find an invariant subspace V2 such that V can be written as V1 direct sum V2 we can ask this question If the answer is yes, then <coughs> decomposable if you have a reducible representation and if you can write it like that, then we say D is decomposable. If no, if the answer is no, then D is indecomposable. If the answer is no, then D is indecomposable. So, <coughs> you can have the following picture. can be written, can be viewed as reducible or irreducible. Depending on the fact whether there is an invariant subspace or not. Okay, that means there exists a V1 invariant subspace of V. Here there exists no invariant subspace. Further, this can be divided into two categories. There exists another invariant subspace V2 such that V is equal to V1 direct sum V2. In such case, we call this one as decomposable. If no such V2 exists, it is reducible but indecomposable. So you have reducible, decomposable, reducible, indecomposable. Okay? Now, if we have a unitary representation, if we have a unitary representation, then if it is reducible, it is always decomposable. 
if it is reducible it is always decomposable how because for a unitary representation we have a hermitian inner product so we can always write this as v2 can be written as v1 perpendicular that means all those vectors that are orthogonal to v1 will constitute the second invariant subspace okay these are vectors or you call this as orthogonal subspace orthogonal space to v1 so this always exists so if you have a unitary representation and if v1 exists v2 also exists so all unitary representations have this property that reducible implies decomposable okay second you can prove that every representation is equivalent to a unitary representation okay these two together will have no relevance for this every representation is equivalent to a unitary representation this is true for finite groups for discrete groups for continuous compact groups there is only a, uh, this is not true only if you have a non compact groups but for a large class of groups that we study <coughs> every representation is equivalent to a unitary representation every representation is equivalent to unitary representation no 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 v1 perpendicular is set of all vectors you take a vector it is perpendicular to all vectors in v1 so for example if you if you take v1 as xy plane set of all vectors along the z direction are perpendicular to all vectors in xy plane so if v1 is xy plane v2 is z axis the entire z axis so that is the vector space if you take a three dimensional space if xy plane is v1 and v2 is z axis so direct sum of xy plane plus z axis will give you the three dimensional space okay so like that every representation is equivalent to a unitary representation this is true for discrete and compact continuous you 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 do it step by step you find out you can have you can have direct sum of 3 also okay you can have direct sum of 3 also but you once you find out v1 you find out v2 then